This is the Party Poker Premier League Poker from the M Resort in Las Vegas. We're gonna fucking dance. Don't hurt me, please don't hurt me. Yeah! It's been a battle between poker's greatest players. You've declared war, I've accepted your term. It's good, it's fucking good, and that's what I'm talking about. I waited, I trapped him, I checked behind, I free bet, I did everything right, and if it's a jack or a 10, someone, something's game broken. They strive for a top league finish, and egos were bruised as players were knocked out of the running. Well, this deal is just incredible. I mean, this is just a, you know, unbelievable. I haven't won one hat. Oh, God, dang. But I'm gonna punish you, like I promise. Cool. This has been the greatest Premier League yet. That's kind of weird. At least you put your money where your mouth was. And we're about to reach the climax of season four. Yeah! 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 Six heats have played out with the top four in the league advancing straight through to the final table. Now two heads up matches will commence to determine who takes the last two spots in the final. Those in fifth and eighth places will battle it out and then sixth and seventh will go toe to toe. First up, it's Daniel Negreanu versus defending champion JC Tran. Kid MCD bringing it to you live from the M Casino. Turn an ace to end this race, yo. Obviously the goal was to make the final table and uh, my route to the final table has been very different and very difficult starting with a zero. Um, having said that, I'm really looking forward to getting back to the final table and surprising those that are there and go, whoa, what are you doing here? I thought you were out. No idea what in the world's going on here. I feel like I deserve to be, be back to defend my title. In the biggest spot in Premier League so far. <laughs> I feel pretty good, I mean, I feel like, you know, I'm here and I, I almost didn't have a chance to be here and, and I'm gonna make the best of it. I'm gonna take you down, Tran. Well, Daniel, I know you play with me a lot, but I'm gonna bring some new stuff to the table that you haven't seen before, so be ready. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Ravello, JC Tran, Negreanu, Premier League, that's what I'm talking about. Every tournament should be like this. Premier League playoff zone, and I'm here with a man who should have been there, missed by the narrowest of margins, Phil Helmut. Well, yeah, let's not talk about me. There's some very compelling storylines going on here, and, you know, the JC versus Daniel match, I mean, JC's a natural-born Hold'em player, and Daniel's just incredibly talented. He may be a natural-born Hold'em player. Of all the known players out there that the people out there know, you know, uh, of all the big names, there's not a lot that are natural-born Hold'em players, and you have two of them in the first match. It's going to be exciting. Now, you know both of their games intimately. You know, big match against JC, heads up in the last season. This time, just last time, the big match against Negrano. What's it going to come down to? Last night! Why did he beat me? Why am I out? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I think, that, I think that it's going to come down to a couple of really well-placed bluffs. It's going to come down to a couple of really, you know, brilliant reads. I mean, someone's going to have to make a big call. Someone's going to have to make a big bluff, and I think that's going to be the difference. There's always a key hand. Let's get over to Kara to start the match. Our first heads-up match is about to get underway. Will it be JC Tran or Daniel Negreanu who makes it to the final table of the Premier League? I thought about the four points in there's Daniel Negrano, and don't say the Premier League doesn't throw up some tricks. Two guys who would have been thought to be locks to make the final table on their own. J.C. Tran, the reigning champion, and Negrano, who came in here with all hopes, but they've had to scramble their way. Negrano had to have a big finish in his last match to get in, and J.C. Tran was on the rail in that last match, unable to control his fate. <laughs> and having to actually root for Daniel Negreanu hands, uh, to beat Phil Helmuth so he could get in this. Heads up. Both of the players have mentioned that they're familiar with each other's games. They probably have very similar games. They're small ball players. They like to see flops. They like to see turns. They like to see rivers. JC said there'll be no three betting, and I think it'll be up to Daniel to more dictate the play of this match. JC is such a chameleon. Okay. Tran, of course, has had some memorable oh, heads-up wow, battles wow. in the Premier League. In season three, what a match he had with Phil Helmuth and Peter Eastgate, two memorable ones that he came through uh, in fine form against. And here we go, right away, Tran, continuation betting this flop, and yeah, Daniel with the air out. check raise. I mean, this is hand number one. He's got 20% of his stack invested. 
10 more. You can't call hoping for the five. But you can call if you think Daniel's weak. I guess. This is, this is clearly a plan of Negranu's. Come out fast, expecting that J.C. Tran will be letting the first couple get away. I mean, if Daniels, you know, you study J.C. and he espouses that philosophy of... Oh, I'm glad you off me firsthand. Yeah, he espouses that philosophy of rather making a good fold than a good bad call. And if Negrano wants to come out of this fast, Take a thirty or forty thousand chip lead. I beat Roland at a twenty on prop bets in this thing. He's a degenerate. Hmm. That might just work. My team. In with a out. two point five times raise, and here's Daniel. He's peeled off every flop, continue to do so. He could have, could have whatever he wanted with that hand. Yeah. He's been firing the C bet. That's six thousand. Probably not as good a check raising board as the yeah. other one. Phil Helmuth in the box with me, just for the turn. Phil uh, Daniels, sort of check raised with air once already in the first hand, and he's taken a slight lead. This is the first big pot they've had, and this is also the first time JC's fired two barrels in a pot. Well, you can see Daniel has a, he has to figure the king of hearts is good. So, I mean, in Daniel's mind, he needs to hit a 10 or a heart. And so, the bet's only 11K, so he's, you know, obviously he's going to at least call. So he's trying to decide, will a big bet force JC to fold? And is the, is the bet size fishy? JC basically has given every pot to Daniel so far, but now the big one and the first big river car, that's not good for JC. Great card for Daniel, obviously. Need the 10 or a heart. Bam! The 10 of hearts. <laughs> and uh, so I, w I think Daniel, there's what, 44,000 out there? He'll probably bet about 20, 22. There yeah, it is. 20,000. Now JC, of course, has a straight here, so. He can't beat a king, he can't beat a heart. He has to ask himself, what did Daniel call the raise with on, what did Daniel call the bet with on 4th Street? Yeah, I mean, sort of hard for Daniel not to have a heart here, isn't it? Yeah, this might be, this might be a situation where JC can get away from the hand. I mean, I, you know, what can Daniel have? I mean. You think just Daniel just suddenly bet out with like queens and tens? No. So it seems it seems like Daniel has it, and I think JC will fold. But but if he calls, it's because he thinks that you know he has a straight and eight, and he thinks that he might you know get half the pot or maybe. Okay, he made the King call. King of Hearts. Oh. He's paying him off. Any heart good, King of Hearts, and that's knocked JC yeah. down, way down. 41,000 left early on. They start with 100 each? Yeah. 
Best of three. I'm so sick I'm not in there, Jesse. I'm so sick. You're the bubble boy, Phil. I mean... So close. Actually, I feel great. I'm just so positive and charged up, and I, and I feel great. Cool. Now, you know JC from past Premier Leagues. I don't know how... But Daniel, you just seem to have a, be very zoned into his uh, his play yesterday or the last match. Are you in general? You think you've got a line on Daniel's well, tendencies? Uh, Daniel and I have played a lot of poker together, so you know, I mean, I, I have some some reads on him, and he has some reads on me, and you know, so great flop for Daniel. Um, he basically now he's flopped second pair. He might want to check this because he's trying to decide in his mind. Does JC have seven, eight? Seven. See, the check does two things. First, it allows JC to try to bluff him, and uh, and second, it seven. protects him in case it's queens against ten. So. And I mean, JC's problem, you know, he's he's been bluffed out once. In addition to that, he's just missed everything. I mean, horrible card for JC here, um, because now he's turned a pair. And Daniel bets 10,000 to 12,000. I really like his bet here. Now, JC has a tough decision because JC, he probably is going to call. But, I mean, to move in here is just, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do against Daniel, who can call you with a 10. This, this, this match could be over in just lightning fast. Um, you know, it's only 50 big blinds to start. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to see JC call here, and then he's in he's in pretty bad shape because he'll be down to like thirty thousand. He really needs a seven or a four. Um, call. If the queen Daniel's sinking, pair the pair the queen or the ten, um, or he wants a deuce. I mean, he's sinking his best hand. So. And should Daniel go for the jugular now? Oh no no! I mean, that's a horrible card for Daniel. I mean, he, he basically the straight and the flush hit and the jack hit and all that stuff. Now. Daniel might make some little value bet, like, yeah. no. Pair of tens. Poor J.C. Negranu running rampant over Tran. J.C.'s got 27,000, so it's really, what is it, just sort of wrapping uh, your, your hands around his, uh, his, his throat now, really, like it's a nice bow constrictor. <laughs> one thing in his favor is there's still 11 hands left to play in the, in the one in 2,000. Phil played better yesterday. Oh, you know he, why? Because he, he just, had to win. He, he finally didn't care about points, he so he hit. started. Playing. Yeah, but but he had to win though. That's what I'm yeah, saying. So. so he started to just play, but like, it was much better. <laughs> you owned him, Phil. You owned him. <laughs> now, what Daniel's thinking here with two fives? I mean, part of him wants to just move all in, well, and he's going to get that option. So this is just a cooler uh, for Daniel. Oh. Wow! And JC just blew it um, here because if JC. Daniel wanted to just get all in here with two fives sure. and, and, and try to just take him out, and that would have been it. But Wow, how did J.C. Tran manage to win the minimum here? Is he trying to play too fancy, or yeah, is it? Yeah, I mean, if he would have just re-raised 2,000 or 4,000 more or anything, Daniel might have slid it, you know? Um, if he moves in, Daniel would have snap called him with the fives. He thought it, it, looked, it was too big a, a, a shove, you know? The 30 was going to just, Daniel was going to have to fold so many yeah. hands or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He always does this weird thing where he'll re-raise you to 200,000. You call, so there's 450 in the pot. Now he bets 60,000. <laughs> know, yeah, like I saw that one. He does, it all, he does that stuff all the time. Against Tony, that hand, do you remember that other one? He check raised a flop, Tony re-raised, then they check, check dark, and then he bet like minimum on the river. Boy, they can't get you out of their mind, even it's when you're crazy, not at the table. right? I mean, Daniel, why they want to spend <laughs> this energy talking about me. You know, Daniel wants to judge Three, me, but I mean, he, he, you have to see all the whole cards. I mean, if yeah. he knew I bluffed him 10 times or made 10 moves on him, he might say something different. Well, could be what he's thinking. All so here we go. Yeah, JC Tran aces and now pocket queens. Now he should have doubled up with the aces, so. Yeah, you got to make some money here, JC. Ugh. Yeah. So. JC bets, obviously, it's just over the spot. I don't blame him for betting. Slow playing the aces there, just calling 2K more was a gambling move. Um, but but if you're going to gamble, you know Daniel's going to call a min raise or a smaller raise. You might as well raise 4,000 in that spot when you had the aces. Right. Um, because, you know, Daniel's going to call that, and you give him the chance to move in. And I think Daniel, in that case, would have moved in, and JC would have been doubled up. 
Who's doing commentary? Anyone know? Who? Phil mm -hmm. Helmuth? <laughs> He's just found out you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I know he didn't like that. You see the look on his face? Yeah. <laughs> Take the TiVo back if you're at home and rewind that. Uh, Phil Helmuth? <laughs> that was the Daniel face. Okay. Yeah. No, there was, I think, three matches in Daniels where he actually built up a big stack, like 500 plus, and finished finished fifth or worse. What could he do? Can't really raise, can you? He considered it. I mean, you know, it's, it's the problem is you don't want to. If JC is a ten, you don't want to just double him up. Yeah. JC might bet five or something. Eight thousand. Split it up. Still getting down there pretty low, JC, but he's. Up, Jeff. He all his chips in yet. Yeah, he did, too. But he had a double gutter on the flop. You got a pair. Yeah. <laughs> I hate those spots where I call and I feel like the best I can do is chop, you know? I felt like there was a chance you had a five, and if I made a pretty big bet, there's just a small chance you can fold. Yeah. So, all of it, maybe. <laughs> raise 4,000. Oh my god, a well. min raise with Jax. Uh, if JC puts any kind of re raise in, he's going to double up. Another clear, easy double situation for him. And he, he smooth call with the aces. This time he has a few more chips. 12,000. Easier. This is automatic. 24 more. It's 36 total, right? There's just no way Daniel can do anything but show. Well, on. he raised all in. Oh, yeah, he could. Got queens. Call. Of course he has to show. Jack. Queens. Really? Yeah. I said, that's, I, I said I had queens. That's you dirty. <laughs> you didn't hear me when I said I had queens? When? No, no. I. Oh. It's a dirty one. Phil's probably saying, "This is how I got him last time." Yeah. And he picked up aces against ace king. <laughs> Queens and aces already. That's twice. You had twice queens and once aces. You? Oh wow. Oh, don't worry, you're folding all of them. Don't worry. <laughs> I wasn't folding. Then Jax, you just open fold on the button. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but it's just a cooler. I mean, there's nothing that, that Daniel could do. That's here. a good flop for you. Yeah. Because you have three queens and I just have a pair of jacks. <laughs> if you would feel lack, it'll come Jack Jack. Yeah. That's a good flop for him. All Daniel's hard work down now. <coughs> Sort of eroded away. I decided to play a little fast this time just because I felt like yeah. you were semi strong, right? Yeah. Now, if I flat there, you, you might not even double me up. It comes queen high. Saying he JC's dry. Talking, yeah. about, talking about how well he played the hand. <laughs> yeah, it was Queens v. Jacks. Say, though, that just, you know, in one of these, that those are big, big coolers. You get Jacks in the end or yeah. behind. <laughs> yeah, it is a big cooler. Heads up. If you get nines in there behind, it's a pretty big yeah, cooler. Yeah, ex exactly. I'm on jacks. Ace king. Well, I'm ace king. Ace jack behind is a yeah. big cooler. Right? <laughs> They've played one level of this first head-to-head -head match, and JC Tran, though he's trailing, has just doubled up. Other stats similar except for steal attempts. Negreanu that much more aggressive from the button. Join us after the break as Daniel Negreanu and JC Tran battle it out for a place at the final table. Welcome back to Party Poker Premier League Poker. This is where poker's elite have been battling it out in a league format to win a spot at the final table. Now two heads up matches will take place to determine who takes those last two seats in the final. It's best of three, 21 hands a level, and first up it's JC Tran and Daniel Negreanu in a clash at the felt.
chip lead with Daniel Negreanu, momentum perhaps with J.C. Tran, who was less than half stacked. So with the blinds now two and four thousand, doesn't have that much room. Tran though, like Negreanu, these guys will see flops if they can and use every weapon in the book before the push shove bot comes into play. So it's a raise up to nine and a call from the grinder in the big blind. It's not much of a hand, but then yeah. JC doesn't have much of one either. Bottom yeah. pair for both. What would betting here accomplish? Well it's a funny bet because sort of the question about is Daniel capable of having an ace here from the big blind? He is capable of having an ace, but would he bet out with it? That's what JC has to ask himself. JC, I don't think, is quite as worried about an ace. He's thinking, all right, does Daniel have a 10? Does he have a 9? Does he have a spade draw? And if he does have one of those hands, does a raise win it? So, you know, I mean, JC's running through a whole range of things. He's decided that his threes with the oh. queen are the best hand, and they are the best hand oh, now. Some call. I mean, I mean, what call rather than raise? That's some, some kind of call. He, he may be calling because he thinks Daniel cannot bluff the river. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the other part of it is. Daniel, can you bluff the river? 42,000 out there. And so he, this is a great situation because Daniel thinks that JC is weak. And JC thinks that Daniel is weak. And uh, and yeah. Daniel's finally decided just to give up on it. I'm sure that JC's yeah, going to check it. Small. How big? The smallest. Three. Oh, son of a gun. Your kicker's too good. <laughs> was that a pot that could have been, been won by both players? Nice or was Tran just, just too good to get beaten that Well, ball? you know, listen, JC Tran is playing more like, you know, the classic order? style of poker that I <laughs> yeah, like I to play it. here, where right he's just checking a pair behind on the flop. The new kids don't do much of this. I like when you said smallest. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got a like pair, <laughs> two fives, or a river to four. <laughs> Yeah, just the four. <laughs> There's not that many players in the world that will flop yeah. a pair you know, in Texas Hold'em in a heads-up match and just check it. And I'm not afraid to do it with top pair or bottom pair, and neither is JC. So I, told, I, told um, I think you'll see Daniel right, pretty much bet every time he flops flop. a pair in position. Well, well you talk about a natural-born yeah. Hold'em player. I mean, it was a pretty well, sick check behind well, by well, JC well, because well, there was a whole well, range well, of hands well, that Daniel well, couldn't well, call a bet with but still beat JC. You know? Well, I mean, him checking on the flop makes, you have to understand, Jesse, that when it comes, uh, you know, 3, 9, 10, and JC does not want to get, he doesn't want to bet out there and have Daniel check race with a straight draw. JC has just about leveled the scores. And all of a sudden, both players now deepish stacked, you know, 25 big blinds deep now. Look at this, uh, like 50 50 here. Wow, great, great card for JC. 50-50 oh, now. No. But 15, though. Daniel may not have picked the best time to fire his his, his first uh, turn bluff. Now here's what has to be going through JC's mind. All right, probably my three fours with an ace are good. Um, do I want to move in here or or raise here or I, or is Daniel drawing dead? Does Daniel have like a five with a king? And if Daniel does have a five with the king, you probably you, there's some arguments for not raising here. Um, if he knew that Daniel had a flush draw, JC would raise. And the reason Daniel's betting is because there's such a big chance both of them are still drawing? I mean, Daniel thought JC was weak on the flop, and he was right. Um, JC yeah. was weak on the flop, but not anymore. Daniel does not like this raise. No. And yet, only 25k to call. Can you pass for that price? Daniel has to ask himself, um, you know, I mean, am I a favorite in this match? If he thinks he's an underdog in the match, he's going to get his money in in a gambling spot oh. at some point, you know? Um, 
Negrano lays it down to Tran, who has come back from 27,000 to now be leading in this match. And JC just decided that, look, I have to raise it here because, um, now he has three fours, but I have to raise it because there's two, the board is just too draw heavy. There's a flush draw, there's a straight draw. And, uh, you know, he didn't want to risk calling 15,000 and having blinds, a six 000. hit or a deuce <laughs> hit or a heart hit and then not knowing what to do. Okay. Yep. Of course, a king here would be horrible for Daniel. Trans just limped this one. And it's starting to look like that oh. when Daniel was hitting the flops, he was going to have a really easy time beating JC. When neither of them are hitting the flops, oh, and this there is, is a cool king, one. that's yeah. just absolutely horrible for Daniel. Yeah. Um, that that could be the end of this of this match because Daniel now hits a king and he's going to bet it, and JC's probably going to raise it, and Daniel's going to have a well tough time five. getting away. But JC might not raise. I mean. You know, this might not be the best spot for him to raise it, because if Daniel has a flush, you know. Yeah. Cool. So much his style just to call. The problem, right, is that... Daniel has da exactly two outs. I mean, yeah. he's in pretty bad shape here. Now, three or five would tie it. Daniel Styles to make a big bet here. Because he thinks he's ahead, right? Yeah, and he may well bet, you know, 25,000 or something, or 30,000, or. He's going to be pretty sick. There it is, 28,000. 28, Here's the thing, JC, you know, it's possible JC could lay this down. I mean, I don't think he will, but it's completely possible because now JC knows that Daniel has a real hand. Cool. Yeah, he had to call, though. He's calling, right? Yeah. He got a king. How big? Oh, sh seven. That's so cruel. <laughs> that That's so eight weird. plays. <laughs> Games with a 10, 9, 8. eight. And two great players. That's a cooler. Top yeah, pair. that Yuck. was, you know, I mean, Daniel bets. Uh, that was very unlucky for Daniel there. And it was very unlucky the Queens versus Jacks for Daniel as well. <laughs> then there was the Aces versus Fives where Daniel could have doubled him up. So there's been a lot of... Uh, just swung the other way. JC had a rough start, but he's cruising now. And That's why JC uh, didn't panic early, because he knew if he just hung in there, you know, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> it was amazing. It looked like he was gone and buried in the oh. first match. Now Negrano's in the position he was in. Go ahead. And is Negrano, yeah. should he be doing anything different, or is it just swings and falls? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think Daniel, I think Daniel, wow. So Daniel's flopped basically an open ender here. He needs a five or a nine, and JC has an thousand. eight. So Daniel may move in here. Because he can get some hands of JC's to fold. If JC's got a four, go. right, with a weak kicker. JC's going to snap call him here. 27 more. Surprise, Chase. He's taking more than 10 seconds to call. Count it down. I got an eight. Okay. Took him about 10 seconds. John? <laughs> no, I got an eight. Okay. I got a five, nine, ten. Oh, not a ten. Gee. No, yeah. Not a ten. That hurts. Huh? Five and nine. Five or nine or a couple or clubs. Or club, club. It's not as good as Daniel wanted, but it's still outs. And it's, it's, an unfluck it's an unlucky flop for Daniel, though, to be honest. Ever oh, since no, he got the big no, chip no, no, lead, no. it's been a triple or quadruple cooler. Daniel needs a five and only a five Take to a win nine. this pot. Nine would be a split pot now. All right. Wow. You're up one, kid. Next match. Man, that cooler. <coughs> Daniel Negrano had the lead, no. but now no. he's down <laughs> one no. nil and needs to win two on the trot. So they've realigned the chips or redoled them out, Phil, 100 apiece. And mm. JC Tran just needing one out of two matches now to go to the final yeah, tape. Yeah, like yeah, JC's just in great shape now. He's up there, one so. match and... Uh, 
I, I like what you're saying about what JC does, which is that. Well, that's. Yeah. Yeah, see, JC is going to limp in with King Queen. He's going to limp in with Ace High. He's limping with a lot of these hands, and he's looking at a flop. Now, if he if he doesn't hit something, he's going to so call a bet. All the hands and at the wrong level. Daniel just mm -hmm. missed all of all of those hands. I mean, he, he was a little unlucky. And he makes it very hard for you to bluff him out of a pot without really committing to it, right? You can't just expect to put 4,000 in a pot and get right. J.C. Tran off the hand. And here's an example of it. J.C. just called with King-10, and this time Daniel actually has him beat for once. Is it time for Daniel to make the second barrel because he knows J.C. is calling light, or be careful? Well, but he, Daniel hasn't made the second barrel one time without having it, so... Uh, I mean, with you know, d every time Dennis had a straight draw, he's checked in this spot. So, what's well, he trying to represent? What's JC trying to represent? I don't know, but Daniel's not going to go for it. Daniel might even raise him here. It's so fishy. It's so donk. That maybe. No. Daniel is never in a million years going to fold this hand. <laughs> the question is whether he's going to raise it or whether he's going to call it. Now, he's decided to call. Now, maybe, oh. just maybe, yeah. if a deuce comes on the river or a small card that's not a straight card, Daniel can make a $20,000 value bet. And maybe. That looks like a card that could have hit JC, doesn't it? Okay. JC checked instantly. Daniel, could he value about 10, 12,000 or something? God, Came out big, 22,000. So Daniel bet the 22,000, even though the queen hit. Do you think he's trying to get JC off the same hand? He, he thinks JC might have a deuce. Mm -hmm. right. So he bet it in case JC had a deuce. I'm winning all the wrong, the wrong levels. <laughs> I can beat 6-7. Oh, you had 6-7? I said I can beat 6-7. Oh. Negreanu, as he said, he's um, <laughs> he's come out fast in every match and then given him back. He's got to carry it through. Well, the I cards have a lot to do with that. Last, last match. Picked up more hands? Yeah. In the sure beginning, is. I was, you know, doing good, and then, yeah. obviously, I was hitting a lot of flops and hitting a lot of cards, but then... Oops, sorry, yeah. wait. PJC <laughs> is so good. I'm sorry. He, I, I always forget. I always forget sometimes how good he is. And I'm not saying Daniel's not, but... Wow. First time Daniel's three bet in the match. Here's a spot where if JC was reading Daniel really well, he probably could have laid it down. Oh my God. It's over. It's a cooler. Wow. Unbelievable. It's a, it's a complete cooler, Phil. Daniel got a nice raise in there, too, before the flop. Kind of bad for Daniel. This is. If JC elects to raise, Daniel should never be folding, right? Well, that's not true, but. It's a very interesting hand here. It's going to take a hell of a... Stop, Daniel. Think. Daniel may go with this hand. I mean, he has an overpair. Come on. Yep, he went with it. I think I'm calling. I call. Cool. Cool. New heart. The New York yeah, wheel. <coughs> Uh, Daniel's Not like... I can't win with the ace or the six. Wow. <laughs> what a sick board. Yeah. Nine. Oh, that's a good one. Now I need to fade a straight flush. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to go out, a straight flush. Mm -hmm. If I lose that way, I'll Fair take flight. it like a man. And Granu has just won this. <laughs> all right. You need, to give me, you need to give me some chips. Yeah, all right. I told you we're going three. Hello, darling. Oh, shit. Okay, I need one chip and then the rest for him. That's made it one all. They'll play a rubber match. <laughs> but there'll be another thing. heads up after yeah. this. And Tara's caught up with those two competitors over at the bar. One all.
I've caught up with Ian and Roland here who are watching with uh, anticipation the first heads up match. It's one all. We don't know yet whether JC or Daniel is going through. Obviously, you guys are playing up next. How prepared do you feel? Uh, I feel pretty prepared. I mean, my heads up game is uh, something that I've practiced a lot uh, on the internet. And uh, I played in these for the last couple of years and I've played Ian a lot. So I feel prepared. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to win, but uh, I feel ready to give it my best. You guys have both had a tough road to get to the final table. One of you is going to make it, one of you isn't, so that's going to be gutting for someone. But uh, how's the struggle been for you, Ian? Because it's not been easy. I wouldn't say we both had a, a hard route to get here. He's just rolled out of bed and, and turned up, and uh, I've had to fight my way through uh, a few qualifiers. But, yeah, I mean, this is, um, this is the beginning for me. You know, I feel like I've been here for a month already. Um, all, the, all the hard work's been done. This is the beginning of the final. So I'm right up for it, yeah. Okay, well, good luck to you both in your heads-up matches. Thanks very much. It's one all in our first heads-up clash here in Vegas. Join us for the decider after the break. Round three, ding, ding, ding. That was the best turn card. I'll take it like a man, I promise. Welcome back. It's Party Poker Premier League Poker 4, and it's 1-1 for Daniel Negreanu and JC Tran. This is the deciding match to see who goes to the final table. Let's get the cards in the air. Aces, kings, let's do it. And Phil, maybe it wouldn't be any fun if there wasn't a rubber match. Tran and Negreanu, emotional roller coaster for Negreanu. What, what's up now? What's he thinking? Well, look, you have to understand, JC got his money and is a huge favorite uh, in that last match. If he wins, this, this would have been over already probably, or, or Daniel would have been very short. All right, now, now Daniel has a, has a chance to do something here. He's decided to call it. Turns out he has JC really dead here, but he only yeah. has queen high. So, and just calling, will Daniel be able to? What, did he not want to jam it? Oh God, that's what an ugly card God, that is. God, that's so sick. That is sick. Now JC's probably gonna have to check it. No. Why didn't Daniel check raise the flop? Was it because it would look so much like a, a draw hand that you're gonna have to just? Get it all Dan in there you with. might see it. This is a spot where Daniel may move in. I mean, th this would be the gutsy play of the match for him if he could pull it off. Most likely he's going to call, but if he can actually, you know, sum up the courage to move in here, um, Daniel's sense weakness on the flop, and, and that's what he's thinking right now. Okay, I feel like JC was weak on the flop. Um, the five didn't change anything. Well, as it turned out, the five was JC's only out, and now Daniel has to decide. Um, you know, if he wants to follow through with that flop read. If he does move in, he's probably going to win the pot, but he just doesn't want to take the chance. There's one horrible card for Daniel here. It would be a jack. Oh, he can't win. Check. Queen eye. Uh, I don't know. Damn, what a pot. Yeah. That that felt like a pot yeah. that swung the balance, yeah, yeah. Phil. That was ugly. Had to come yeah. five, no ace, no nine. That yeah. was ugly. That was really unlucky for Daniel. JC was out there bluffing and spiked his five. Um, it caught a card. It also got 10,000 extra because of it. I mean, <laughs> that was I mean, ugly. He hit a three outer and that took Daniel to Value yeah, Town at the same yeah. time. And there's Ten Ian Fraser. His the heads up match draw. is, uh, yeah, is yeah. next. He's uh, playing uh, a superhero named Batman, I'm to understand. But, but that's what a fine line it is between winning and losing. If Daniel somehow could have raised on the flop, he would have over 100,000 in chips. Not that I blame him for just calling. I may have just called, but uh, you know, if he could have pulled it off on the turn, he'd have uh, you know, 129,000 to JC, 69 or whatever. JC's gonna call 8,000 more here. JC, it's going to break his Roland heart if you fold. Somewhere. It's going to break his heart. I heard it rolling so here somewhere. we go. 
two aces against the king four suited. Big chance for Negrano. Yeah, yeah, great to, chance. To if level the king it. comes, Daniel could, you know, end up. Uh, there it is. Babu. There it is. So now Daniel has JC by the short hairs, as we'd like to say. Very Ten. unlikely for him not to get the money all in here. Daniel checks. Let's see what JC does. Can JC check this? He may check and play small ball. No. JC, let's remember, does have the chip lead. So if if Daniel doubles through him, I think I think it'll be about 130 to 70. Well, it's interesting here. Um, if Daniel does check raise all in right here. Um, That's fishy. No, a JC might be able to get away because Daniel made a big re raise before the flop. And he might do it anyway, right? Because there's so many draws out there, better just to get the money in and not have to check the turn and then give a free river and that sort of Daniel's thing. Daniel's thinking in his mind, does JC have jack five? Because if he has jack five, Daniel wants I to see. let him continue to bluff. That's what I he's see. thinking. Right. He's thinking, I don't want to get this guy to fold here. Um, I want to play against jack five, but I, I want to get all the money in Nine. against queen 10. Finally decided he had to move in because is that 43? Yep. Automatic call, or is there more to it than that? 43 more. I wouldn't. I think JC will call. I felt like if you had a spade draw, you would check raise. What? Too. So I felt like if you had a spade draw, you'd check raise too. This is the kind of thing where you could end up. Speed. You know, this would be a great laydown. And this is the kind of thing if you can make the great laydown and come back and win the match. Uh, you know, people talk about it later. I recall. Uh, he called JC. Uh, King. I got aces. Aces? Yeah. Need to get lucky. JC right. Trans got 60,000 left, Phil, and a chance That's to hit not. a king or four <laughs> to go to the final table. Yeah, he needs a king or a four. He got his money in, in, in kind of bad here, um, obviously. Ace or an eight would be good. Uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was not an easy fold for, for him for 43,000 more. Five outs. Five outs on the ground of the chip leader. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know what the vibes were. I got it right. JC's the defending champion. Negrano's got this destiny thing going on. Daniel's, Daniel ha has picked up, I mean, hands when he's really needed them. He picked yeah. up the aces against me when I had king nine suited, and he'd been raising and re-raising a lot. Um, still, I, I should have I should have known, and JC should have known. We're as great hold'em players, as natural one hold'em players. We're supposed to be able to look at Daniel, and say to ourselves, "All right, we know he has aces or kings." The problem is JC didn't look up at Daniel. He was playing his cards. Heads up play is just great. I, I love heads up play. I mean, for sure, Daniel's going to raise. He's going to try to. Dangerous stuff. Yeah, very dangerous for JC. Does not want a king. Negrano. King comes and it's over. Wow, unless a five comes. <laughs> Wait, unless two fives come. How about that? Okay, JC is now the chip leader. I'm going to go on Lightning. record. Lightning. <laughs> JC is now the chip leader. Oh, this is going to be so sick. So sick. Now, JC has to decide how to play this hand. And one way to do it is to min raise. Another is to make it 16,000. Another way is to just call. And uh, raise. all of a sudden, Negrano Not says to himself, it's either a five or air. Is that right? Or is it a king sometimes? Well, too? here's the situation. I mean, if Daniel were to get away from this, that would be like an amazing fold. I mean, um, I mean, this is, this is where you have a chance to make a fold that everybody talks about for years, you know? Yeah, but this could be a flush draw, right? Could yeah. be nothing. Yeah, I know. That's why I said if he were somehow to get away from it, it would be amazing. Are you kidding that's me? That's Are you kidding me? 
Oh, All right, I was wrong. There's no longer a chip leader. In fact, look at what just happened. The Case King just hit, and Daniel's on a free roll. He was completely dead. He's on a free roll, you're right. And now Daniel's on a free roll. Wow, that was just absolutely sick. The last thing Daniel will be thinking is that they've got the same hand because it doesn't really make sense for JC to play the king like this. Daniel really, he's in a tough, I mean, hes he doesn't know. I mean, here's the thing, he has the nuts. They both have the nuts and they're both trying to figure out how to extract the maximum amount out of it. So Daniel already has kings full. He figures JC's drawing dead and he's trying to decide he's opted to just call. I mean, if an ace comes, uh, this would just be one of the sickest beats I've seen in a while. No way an ace is coming. Is it? Or a five! <laughs> it was almost a five! I want a five on the river. Yeah. That was a bad turn card. Oh, God. God. Jesus, you had me. <laughs> There's nothing I was going to oh lay down ever. Whew. Good thing it was ace. Sick. Man. Sick hand. Came king, five, five. I had ace, king, you had king, five. Turn is a king. Turn is a king. That was ridiculous. Whew. One outer. Hmm. I thought the turn card hurt me, because I had the kicker. That is as emotional as you'll ever see, JC. That was massive in terms of this Premier oh, League, Phil. <laughs> Unbelievable. I remember I went on record saying JC was going to have the chip lead at the end of this hand. Well, <laughs> Daniel hit the frickin' one-outer. <laughs> Go ahead. J.C. Tran has got such a lower boil or higher, whatever it is, boiling point than anybody else. You know, he could just say to himself, look, if Daniel's going to limp into a pot, i got to try and grab it. But he's not, not yet. I mean, how many BBs is he willing to go down to? I'm all in. All in. Wow, just ship, open ship. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's what I told you. See, now th I think that's the right strategy for Daniel. I mean, if you have 6-7 JC, then uh, call this. If you have a flush yeah. draw, call this. You might you might survive. You might double up, but you're going to have to fade two cards, and I'm going to be drawn live. JC Tran ain't going to give up. You know he never does, but mm -hmm. counting there... Under 10 big blinds and Negreanu, the monster. Flip it in from the button. What? And just needs to get a double up. And then one more double up. JC with the four, he's checking a Daniel because Daniel's been so aggressive. How dangerous is that? And, you know, a similar spot where he kind of folded a deuce on the turn, Daniel bet. Daniel checked happening. right behind him. Spike! There it is, an eight. Daniel's going to bet, I don't know, 8,000? Four. I got an eight. Well, should j overall, should JC have protected there, or is it just, you know, he's got to keep up the style he's got? Well, that's the style he's been playing, but if you're not going to catch a bluff from somebody, you might as well bet it, right? right? And Daniel hasn't been bluffing him very much, so he should have bet it for that reason. And bad news for JC Tran, not just the stack fill, but the blinds up to three and 6,000. Here's the deal. <coughs> uh, Daniel, a passive Daniel Negreanu, JC could come back on, because... But Daniel's not going to play passively. Daniel's like, all right, I want to get the 25 in. Even if I'm an underdog, I'm going to get that money in there against you, and uh, we're going to play. Yep, that's oh. what it's done. And the quick call by okay. Negreanu probably beats Jack High. I need it. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel's a 2-1 to one favorite. Wow. Negreanu. Stepped up the levels of aggression, won every pot, basically. See Bring Jack. it home. He's Brisbane. Ooh, it's oh. the nine. A little help. Not bringing it home. All right, the jack, but with a nine, as Daniel said, he needs a ten, and it's Just over, really or a queen or a king, and he's a huge favorite. Times. Lower, you gotta go lower than that. Daniel needs a 
king, a queen, or a ten oh, yeah. to go to the Premier League finals. Two pair, that's good. Yeah. Well, you got 25, right? <laughs> I think. You never know. Is it the beginning yeah. of the biggest huh? comeback yeah. in history? Okay. It might be the biggest comeback in Premier League history. No one more double up. <laughs> Come on. There you go. I was hoping to get anything. I got king queen. I'm like, sweet, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a great opportunity for Daniel. Not only did he did he get JC down to twenty five thousand, but he got them all in when Daniel had the best hand. It was a really sold. sweet really? position <laughs> and before the flop. Yep. In sold some down. ways, wow. Daniel should keep doing this because BB wise, <laughs> right? JC's. No, not, no? Not, but now it's different no. because now, see, now JC's back up to fifty thousand. And if Daniel, now Daniel has to play him straight up again. So you want to get him down to maybe under thirty. Yeah, you get him down to forty thousand. You can just start making the ace ships right. and the king queen ships and whatever. But oh, good. trick. <laughs> Let's see if JC can just kind of call quickly and just call. He's he's fast played, three of a kind or better, twice now, and maybe that is the only way to get action with Daniel. You know he well, just well, you know, fast playing worked one time and it didn't work this time, and um, I would have been a little bit more tempted to call. But JC's also thinking, you know, Daniel's not going to bluff at it anymore. JC now has some life. He's breathing better. He feels a lot better. He feels like all right, I just flopped trips. I got away with Jack four twice in a row. Uh, he made yeah, jacks jack four, and he made three jacks. <laughs> all right, Daniel went back to the all-in, the aggressive 50K bet with King-10 offsuit. It's tough to play against. <coughs> Got a hand. And JC has an ace. I feel like I'm ahead. What's that? So I feel like I'm ahead. Okay. Cool. You might be. You got an ace? Yep. You're ahead. King-jack, King-10. Good call. Natural born Hold'em player, Phil, Phil right. knows when he's ahead. Well, yeah, he had to call. Daniel's been shipping a lot. Daniel could have had an ace rag simple. there. So he made the call, and here we go. Daniel, by the way, Daniel's going to have like 90,000 if he doesn't win this. That's not simple. Now, this that makes it a very interesting situation action, here. As as you can go. Yeah. I don't Still want got a lot Daniel of equity. Daniel needs a jack, and the pot's got, over. He needs a king or a 10 to take a huge lead. If a seven comes, Daniel's dead to a jack. Yes, lower. Oh, that's a queen. Oh, it was lower a paint card. He did not, not want a, a paint lower. card. That's like that. the one paint card. How about, that like how about just a little no, lower than a that? Lot Daniel through to the finals with a 10, a jack, or a king. He hit it! It's a 10, and he's he hits going. it on the river. He Good sucked luck. out again. Thanks. He wins every race, Daniel. It's so <laughs> sick. He wins every race. <laughs> he wins every race. He knocked out the defending champion. Thanks, buddy. With JC Tran out, we've lost the defending champion for the Premier League. He won't be going to the final table. We're sorry to see that. Uh, it was a much more aggressive Daniel than we've seen in the past coming through into the heads up. You were trying to play a lot of small pots against him. Is that right? Yeah, um, you know, we both mix it up a little bit. I mean, um, not a lot of heads up guy would, would limp a lot of buttons, and Daniel and I would limp a lot of buttons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were times where we, we put in a few raises here and there. And, uh, you know, overall, I thought it was a pretty good match. Um, there was a couple of key flops that I had and, uh, you know, had it held up, I probably would have been the final table, but I mean, it's poker and uh, again, I, the rivers not haven't been treating me too well. And, um, you know, it's Daniel, you know, he's, he played great. Can't take anything away from him. And, you know, I wish him the best of luck. And uh, I felt like overall, you know, I played pretty well and uh, I, I can't be disappointed about that. Daniel Negroni wins his heads up match, goes through to the final table. It's been a long slog for you. So congratulations. Talk to me how you feel about your game. Oh man, I gotta tell you, coming in to play JC Tran was, was a tough task. And I knew that anything less than my A game wasn't gonna be good enough. And I really feel like my flow was very good. I was mixing it up really well and trying to keep him off balance a little bit. And I thought I played extremely well. He played extremely well also. So I knew going in, it was gonna be a, just amazing match. I, fi I told him it's going three, we're going three rounds. And we did, and uh, it was epic. Well, take a breath, relax, get ready for the final table and good luck out there, thank you. All right, thanks. Well, Daniel comes through, and Phil, I mean, what was the key dynamic in that match? I mean, the 10-7 of Diamond's hand, Daniel made this nice little check raise, JC laid down the best hand. To me, that was kind of a, a huge, you know, kind of point in that match. It was an inflection point, could have gone either way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, we're on to the next one. It's Roland DeWolf, Ian Fraser, very different setup. I mean, if you ask Roland DeWolf who's the favorite in this match, he's going to tell you he is, like, a huge favorite to win. 
But, you know, Ian's been playing some good poker, great poker. He won his way into this thing, and Ian's capable of making a key bluff, and he's capable of making some key calls. So I think if Roland tries to bluff him, Roland's in trouble. If Roland can, can mix it up, then he has a good chance to win. Join us after the break when Ian Fraser takes on Roland DeWolf for the last seat at the final table. Tough decision, huh? You got lucky there. Oh, my oh. God. Come on, Eraser. Welcome back to Premier League Poker Season 4. We've just seen Daniel Negreanu beat JC Tran for a seat at the final table, and there's still one space to be filled. Who's still in with a chance of becoming the Premier League champion, Ian Fraser or Roland DeWolf? I feel good about the Heads Up game. I feel like I'm probably more experienced uh, than Ian Fraser, and I've been in the Heads Up twice in the last two years, and won both times. So I'm pretty confident that I'm going to win, but as ever, like, your advantage is never that much. How do we still get invited to these shows, doing the same stuff every time? We got a lot of unfinished business on the table anyway. No one's ever said that about me. I'm not feeling this. He pulled a, uh, an absolute massive bluff on me in the last Premier um, League that I played in, and it sort of was a big kick in the teeth for me, and um, I think it was sort of the cause of my downfall for the whole tournament. 20,000 raised already. Oh my gosh. I can't put you on an end while you'd call me on a turn, Roland. I can't, for the life of me, think what you could ask. So insane. Oh my gosh. He's passed. Did you see Roland close oh, his no, eyes? Oh, now he showed him. Wow. Oh, oh no. And Roland blew up and got away Didn't with it. Didn't put you on anything else. I was either miles in front or miles behind. My route couldn't have been any harder, so. Now I'm just at the last hurdle, and then the game begins. You know, if I get in that final, that's me. I'm, I'm completely weighed in. No one expected it to be easy, eh? Definitely better than I thought. I think I'll have overcome uh, some pretty tough odds to make if I make the final, and I want to create Premier League history by being the first person to make three finals in a row. The, the Premier League, this is big. Come on, the razor! One seat left at the final table, Phil Helmuth, and two Premier League veterans to fight it out. Very different match than Tran versus Negrano. How do you handicap it? Well, I mean, this is this, oh. is, this is a very yeah. different match, and I think you're going to see a lot of different stuff. Now, seeing what happened to Ian Frazier, the last heads-up match that he made, he was moving in with nothing, every hand, moving in, moving in, moving in. And so, and Roland, uh, this is just a totally different yeah. match. I mean, these people yeah. aren't going to be... These two are not going to be looking for value on the river. If someone's going to be looking for value on the river and slow playing a hand, it's going to be Roland DeWolf. Ian Frazier is going to just, I think he's going to play kind of hard. DeWolf's sort of seminal hand in the Premier League history is when he made a massive river bluff against Ian Frazier, taking him off two pair. Uh, these guys are known for going for it. Oh, yeah, these two will go for it against each other. I mean, here's the thing. Frazier got away with that move, but... I, I'm not sure that, you know, he, he had a bad read, but he still powered played, through it. Played face to face, right? Yeah. Not really a lot of difference, is it? Not really, mm -hmm. except now it doesn't, it, I mean, it's just now you don't look at each, you're not really looking at each other, you're looking, you're facing that way. It doesn't make much difference, obviously. Makes it, does make a difference which way you five. sit. I, I liked it yesterday five, five. when I was looking right at Daniel. When they put me, uh, put us in the three, six, and the six seat like this, they're in the three seat and the six seat. They're not looking right at each other. And, you know, and it takes an effort to turn and look at the other guy, and you're worried about maybe giving something away when you do that. Right. So I liked it. I, I lost my read on Daniel just a little bit when, in our match yesterday, when we switched positions. Roland's raised this to five. Yeah. Is there a continuation oh, bet here? Check. Yeah. Slowing everything down. Might be a good check. card to bluff on. Check. Roland's just going to check it down. He's hoping the board pairs. No way. All in. I said no. nine, not all in. <laughs> <laughs> Slight difference, but same result. And there's Fraser taking a bluff at it. Now, I don't like the way Roland played that hand. I really don't. Roland has done little more than check so far. But, uh, I mean, that is a good way to get a feel for what your opponent's up to, right? Yeah, I mean, look, Roland, 
Five, Roland three, feels like five, he's a favorite. You know. Stop. Roland thinks he's a favorite in this match, okay? He thinks he's a big favorite in this match. So, because of that, he's the one that's not under pressure. Sure, sure. Ian flops top pair again. Seven. Seven thousand. Well, this ain't getting through. In fact, Fraser's beat him into the pot. Call. Fraser called quickly, so that now now that th th when you call that quickly, sometimes your opponents put you on weakness. Ten. Ten thousand. Wow. I kind of like that lead. Oh. Might have been the only way he was getting money. King five. Oh eight five. Power five side. Roland's hoping now five. that he's going to actually flop a big hand and then Ian's going to get over-invested. That's right. And if I, the moves work until they don't. And the one time it doesn't work, Roland thinks he's going to have way the best of it. And, you know, how different is this ace-nine exactly. than the ace-jack? What if Fraser re-raises? He's... It doesn't want to do it too much. Oh. Well, there's a difference. I mean, Frazier called the 3K more with jack six clubs, which I like. Roland laid down his jack six. His king six for 3K more, actually. Bam! Top pair. Let's see if Roland can figure this out. Um, this is a matter of reading your opponent here. You know, he's thinking about, do I bet? He checked. That was a very good check with ace high there. Uh, most of the most people would have made some sort of continuation bet there. And one of the safer cards on the turn for Fraser. If it comes big, he might not bet again. That's wow, a beautiful what a card, card for Roland. For Roland. Man. That's right. Ten. That's ten thousand. Wow, that was pretty unlucky. You see, Roland didn't do anything wrong. He <coughs> he had ace nine high. And he decided to take the line of checking the flop <coughs> and um, calling on the turn, which was just fine. But it was a pretty lucky nine for him, I'll tell you that. Now, this is, first of all, the f biggest bet made the <coughs> match so far. This is the but first 10K bet. can't beat anything here. The flush hit, the straight hit, everything hit. The overcards hit, 8-9 hit, 8-10 uh, hit. Uh, Rowan could have a 7 and have him beat. I mean, Ian can't beat anything. Except the bluff. At the end of the day, Phil, if Fraser calls here, you have to like Roland's strategy. Tough decision, huh? See, now Roland's talking to him to try the same week. This is going to be big for momentum. Fraser doesn't want to undo all his good work in one swoop. Now, Fraser was unlucky in this hand. I mean, yeah. He, yeah. He, was supposed to, he was supposed to win it. Pair. No. Nines. That hurts. And that has gotten the wolf all the way back. Not far from even. Fraser still got the edge. You expect it to be KG. They played the first level and Ian Fraser just in front. Look at the stats. The wolf's been more aggressive. Besides that, not much in it. Kara's over with Luke Schwartz, who's in the final and getting ready for it. Luke Schwartz has a real shot of taking down a Premier League title. Would that actually mean something to you here today? Um, it would be nice to have a trophy and because uh, I've got to the final table every TV event I've ever been invited to. But I've always come third and fourth and stuff, which is quite tilting. So really want to just win this. I know I've got a massive edge over everyone. I'm, a, I'm the best player in the Premier League, I feel, by, by a long way, really, to be honest. So. Um, Hopefully Phil Lack doesn't flop a house every time I've got any whatever two cards I'm raising with. Um, yeah. Okay. And you're going to take it seriously? You're going to sit at the table? You're going to play your hands? Yeah, of course, yeah. It's yeah. final table. I'm not going to just go missing and play craps. Lines will now be two and four thousand. So you don't have too much room to maneuver, but these Nine. guys know Nine. that. Nine thousand. Two KG Brits. Don't they want that seat? Top. Nearly a min raise for me in and quick call from Roland. Jeez, 
it feels like there's such a big reason for Fraser to check here. I mean, yeah. he, he's got to know that Roland can't have... I mean, I know he, he he could have not very good, but he can't have nothing. 13,000. Right? Oh. So. It's weird. I mean, has Fraser almost set himself up now that he's got to be committed to a couple barrels here? No, not at all. Abort. Abort the check. mission. Check. Check. Yeah, he checked immediately. He, he took one shot at it. I mean, if he hits a queen, actually. Check. Oh, Ooh. my God, he hit a queen. Cooper. You got a queen? You win. Well, I can't believe yeah. he just checked the queen there. I mean, why, why not bet like 10,000? Yeah. Good one. That was a big card. Yeah. And Roland would be generally happy with the way he played the hand. I mean, you know, Fraser's only got that one over card. <laughs> Roland should be thrilled with the way he played the hand. I mean, he gave himself a chance to pick off a big Fraser bluff. I really don't like the fact that the Fraser, you know, checked on the river there. Now, look, he couldn't beat a deuce, but Roland would have bet a deuce. It's going to be hard for Roland to get any action from his big hands. Uh, think about it. Think about it. He's going to up his frequency. Take 44,000 off Ian Fraser's yeah. stack and put it on Roland's yeah, stack. And he's, he's winning. Yeah, he's winning. And, he, and he's way ahead. It just so happened that Ian got himself out of position okay. with the queen three, and he hit it. Big pot. Big flop. 22,000. Oh. Roland's got a 66 left. Fraser hits this flop. Well, yeah, I mean... It, Disastrous for only if it comes like nine three four or some some nine high flops horrible. Twenty two. Hold in. Wow! Wow! Hold in. There's all in. Who was quicker? Who who beat who into the pot? It was an excellent play on Roland's part here. I mean, he he just figured, look. If Frazier has a 10, uh, I'm out. But if he has a 6 or a 4 or a bluff, I'm uh, going to have the chip lead. And maybe A, B, C is a dinner. I mean, if Frazier wants to try that move, try it before the flop. I mean, you know, it went to work, but, but maybe he had two more cards. He might have hit one of them, you know. He's gone to first. Can DeWolf win this battle while only winning like 40% of the pots? Absolutely. Wow. Oh, don't Strong. get crazy here, Ian. Slow down. He may get snapped off here. He may. It's possible. 25. We raised 25,000. Now, DeWolf did fold the ace jack before. How is this different? It's, it's a little bit different because Roland has more of a feel. We raised all in. More, Roland has more of a feel for what he's doing, so. And this is an, this is a bit more an out of the. This is not so straightforward, is it? Well, the very first hand, uh, you know, when he was a jack down against Ace here, that was the first, second, third, third hand. That was way early in the match, and there were no adjustments being made. Now, look at Ian. He looks frustrated. He made a twenty-two thousand dollar bluff. So Roland's like, you know, he's going to try to bluff me again. And the way he put in the chips, he put. Y you know, was similar to the way he was bluffing before. So, but anyway, you got to give Roland credit here because he made the right response. He may have come into this match cold, but he is warmed up. He's hot now. He's he's zoned in. Look at him. He's alive. He is hot. He is zoned in. He's locked into Fraser. Well, he's got Ian playing wild because Ian got away with playing wild, or it looked like he got away with playing wild. And so now Roland is, uh, you know, is kind of in control of this match. He is. Wow. All of a sudden, he has the chip lead. I have seen Frazier get frustrated. Frazier was running over Roland, and I told 12, you Roland 12, was not 12, frustrated. Cool. And, call. Uh, and he, as soon as you mention the word frustrated, frustrated he's now called off with the 10 queen. Now, he may have been committed. I'm not sure, Phil. He made it 12. Roland I mean, re-raised all in. He called for... That was a very frustrating call. He called call for to over 60,000 more. I mean, there's no way Queen 10 could have been the best hand here. So Fraser's just out of his element. He's frustrated, uh, you know, and he, he just had such good control. But you, you can't tilt in poker, you know? He's got six live cards to really send a wrench up Roland's uh, chances. 
You know, a nine here would make it interesting, I think. Um, nope. Roland's just in great shape. Roland's surprised that, that Ian called all that money with Queen 10 off, so he's like, what did you just do? That's it. That's match one. Oh, okay. 34 hands, and Fraser, he needs to regain his cool. Now, if Roland, if Roland would have said, if Roland would have lost that pot, he would have told Frazier how bad he played the hand. <laughs> because he wanted, he sat there and he's thinking, wow. <laughs> wow. Joining Kara is Daniel Negreanu. Who's through? I'm catching up with Daniel Negreanu, who's watching the second heads up match. Any preference on who you'd rather have at the final table? Well, to be honest with you, both of them give me trouble. Uh, Ian Frazier in the heats really was kind of a thorn in my side. And, uh, but at the same time, Roland you know, has a pretty good read on me. So um, I would say that you know, Roland has a bit more experience probably, so maybe it's better if Ian wins. But um, really, it's, it's a toss-up. Okay, well, thanks. We'll uh, see what happens out there. Thanks. The last seat of the final here in Las Vegas will be filled by Roland DeWolf for Ian Frazier. Find out who can seal the deal after the break. Welcome back. It's season four of the Party Poker Premier League Poker. The best in the business have been battling it out in this league format. Two heads-up matches now determine who will take the last two seats at our final table. Daniel Negreanu has already won through, so now it's Ian Fraser and Roland DeWolf going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It's best of three and 21 hands a level to decide who gets that final seat at our final table. They'll re-rack the chips and start six. over. What they won't start over is the score. Roland now one nothing ahead. Wins this one, he's through. Now, will he bring a different look in the second match? You know, no. you have to respond to what Fraser's doing now. What do yeah, you do? well, here's an interesting situation. You don't you don't bring a different look because you got a guy drawn dead and get all and, and made all these kind of weird moves against you. Fraser's playing big pot in that poker now, right? He's playing, he's playing the hammer, and that's a good card for Rian. Good card for Ian, but he's not going to get any action. I don't think. I think that's Roland is like, well, you could have a straight draw, but a straight card hit. So overall, Fraser's probably better off checking this turn, isn't he? Chance I'd like no? to see him bet like 22 see him bet and it? put it in weird in, in that weird way. I mean, you know. Roland might make a blocking bet or no. Roland's going to study and then check, but the more he studies, trying to pretend he's weak, the more Ian knows he has the best <laughs> hand when he does check, which 11. is a funny thing. 11, He could see, beat air. Do you see how he put the chips in and, and face and he fanned them face down? No. Okay, so Ian put the chips in, but he slid them, so they went shh, they fell kind of like in a pattern. And, and and every time Ian's bluffed, he's taken a stack of like a stalk and just put them in straight up. And so Roland, I'm sure, is aware of that and has probably noticed that in the past, is my guess. But also he bet a lot less. It was more of a milking bet. Cool. Not so cool. Just trying Seven. to keep the pots, and you wouldn't Four. you wouldn't expect Fraser to be this strong right now. Okay, here's the deal. Now Roland Roland's deviated from his game a little right. bit here. He decided to call the race with the. He's the in position, more? Phil. He is in position. I said seven. Yes, he's at seven. No, he said seven. Wow, even worse play. Roland didn't was forced All to right. call seven. It is more. what it is. He's in bad shape. Yeah, he he's gotten off his game plan, though. Right. I mean, he, he's, he's, you know. It could cost him. 12. Okay. Oh, don't knock over the stack. So that was a strong, that was, that was the strong fan. Yeah, yeah, he kind of knocked over the stack. Also, I would like to have seen Frazier bet 20,000, because that's what he bet when he was bluffing. This pot's big. The wolf needs help. Is he getting it? No. 
Wow. If you're in, you, you can't bet too much here now. You don't even want to lose rolling now. Full team. That's 14,000. Yeah, you know, yeah. Roland. I think if I think if Fraser would have bet more, he would have had a better chance being called, not less. Which is funny, so right? Whatever I say is a total amount. It's a total amount. Yeah. <laughs> so Roland kind of did it to himself there. He, yeah. he deviated from. He played. He played the first match flawlessly. See, Ian might be better off sometimes. Just you know, I mean, shipping with some weak hands, right. you know puts a lot of pressure on DeWolf, and he does not want to call off lightly, does he? Very good with that. Here's a good place for Roland to, to ship, because he has fours with a straight draw. It's free, it's for, for Ian to do it, yeah. Yeah, for Ian to, to do it. Yeah. And now a real likelihood of it getting checked down, or do you think DeWolf might carry this on? I guess it depends on the turn. That's not a good card for Fraser. Well, Roland has to feel like if Fraser were bluffing, he would bet it himself. So, um, Roland has a tough decision here. Does he think he can get away with it or not? He's only got 47,000. He could bet turn and river. Take the free card and give up the pot. He's going all the way, isn't he? He's going all in on the river as well. Can you Has he taken too long? Does this look weak to you? I mean, Roland's capable of taking a long time, whether he's strong or weak. 18. So. He got it. Wow! He and got he got, it got it away with it. Oh my God! And that was a that was the first bluff he's pulled out tonight, Phil. And he it was just the perfect time for it. Yeah, it was a great bluff, and I'm just surprised that Frazier let him get away with it. Um, you know, I, I'm just, I'm a little bit surprised, but I mean, you know, what are you going to do? He's let the match get away from him. He had to ship in on the flop. He, he didn't pull the trigger. I mean, he's he only, he's not worried. I mean, uh, you know, you c Seven. it comes ace, Seven. deuce, Seven. four. I, it was just kind of a surprising lay down there for Ian. Four. Wow. It, it uh, Look at this, man. Yeah. This, I mean, you know, Ian wants, here's a chance Ian for wants to be shipping here, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a chance for Frazier to take it away. Now, they, they would have just raced it. Yeah, they would have raced it. Yeah, I mean, it's a chance for him to, to, to win a match. You know, now, okay. it looks like it was a smart move now that he didn't. Seven. Okay, well, you know what? I mean, uh, Frazier, you, you have to say, you have to say, Jess, that... I like the eight, ship with the king queen suited there Go because, now. you know, he, he has to get his money in against Two Roland and give himself right. a chance to win. Don't know. <clears throat> Lines have been raised to two and four thousand. Fraser with the lead, but it's narrow. Nine thousand. Four. Roland has a shot here. I mean, uh. The old eight high flop, and they're getting in, I'll tell you that much. I <laughs> <laughs> don't need all that to get in. Twelve. Uh, good aggressive bet there. That's a good aggressive bet. That's big because if he can, he's getting in that range now where, you know, it's a 140,000 to 60,000. So if. Frazier loses 60, uh, he's still going to have 80,000 left. Ten. Frazier, 10,000. One thing that's gone on here, this pattern being setting up, that DeWolf, when he raises pre-flop, if he checks behind, he doesn't have anything. And, and then Fraser's taken off on the turn, right? So he's got to hit something here and then check behind. Right. Okay. Ten. I knew it was going to be ten. Yeah, ten. So that's what he bluffed last time. Can Fraser, does Fraser have the heart and commitment to raise here? 
and just God, it's so weird. It, it looks like the kind of flop that can't completely miss you. Feel like I mean, Fraser. Look at Fraser. He senses something is wrong with Roland, and the more time he thinks, the more likely it is he'll pull the trigger here with be, some crazy move. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be great. It would be a great move for him. Thirty. Ah. You take that long and wait. Wow. Maybe I can get away now. Maybe I can get away now. Yeah, I get away. Wow, that was big. That was Fraser. That was Fraser taking the second match. That Bill. was Ian Fraser taking the second match. It's not over, Jesse, but he stood up and he said, I've had enough of this BS. I'm sick of Mickey Mousing around. He, he made the right leg. move at the right time. Huge move. It was either rising or folding. If you just stick it in. Where did he find that? Where did he find that? And that's what Ian, then that's what Ian, I've seen him do more than once, is find the right time to make a move. And look at what's happened to the chips, Jess. Now, if Frazier, sh what he should be doing, he should 12. be shipping. Oh, yeah. oh, cool. Those were East London well, guts. Now, the Queen 10 again. Okay. Yes, but here's an easy call with the Queen 10 this time. Right. An easy call. Maybe that's my bad hand. I think it might be. <laughs> no, I mean, if I had Frazier's hand, I might have just shipped it. But I mean, he had certainly had to call. Exactly. This will level the scores or double the wolf up. Yeah. Wow, what a flop for Roland. Oh my god, he flopped the nut flush draw. It's my bad hand, eh? Pretty lucky. Roland's already won one flip where they were pretty close to even. Just needs the queen or the ten. That's by not the way, the if by the way, if Frazier would have won that first queen ten flip, I mean he would have had all the chips. Yes, it's true. It's true. Oh, wow, an offsuit queen. Now, Roland feels like he's the most unlucky guy like ever. Nice, Razor's tied it up. It's Molly. one, one, another rubber. The last heads up clash is about to get underway. Find out who will be joining the final table lineup after the break. God, it's a bit of a comeback. Ian Fraser and Roland DeWolf both have one game in the bag for this match, and this is the decider for the final seat at the final table of Premier League Season 4. Pins and needles. The final leg of the final match before the final table. Right. Phil Helmuth and myself style. watching this. DeWolf is clearly playing flops now out of yeah, position. Yeah, he's is he tilted? Has he decided to change his style? Or it's just wrong. He's tilted a little bit from, from where he'd like to be. And yeah. wow, this could be the end of Roland sure. DeWolf now. He's, he's, wow, could Ian Fraser be going to the final table? Well, I mean, l listen, I mean. Oh, I'm going to cool that. Well, first a six has to Ball. come. If a six comes off, then, then it's, or a king, then it's just absolutely over for DeWolf here. But I'm going to check that. There's an yeah. ace, so. His decision to just start playing flops against Fraser out of position when the other thing was working so well, Phil, is it, is it because he's adjusting or is it because he's tilting? I mean, look, I mean, I, I, think, I think that uh, I don't blame Roland for taking a flop with King Six suited. Um, I really don't. So that, you that's do that, yeah. Yeah, that's, Anyone that's, that's pretty Anyone standard, would. pretty normal. But I do think that Roland used a different strategy at the beginning of that match and dug himself a hole. Six. Trace, six thousand. And a call. DeWolf is doing this three, three times big blind thing, which <coughs> in my mind seems to be making the pots pretty big. Mm -hmm. A little bigger than they have to be. Of course. Wow. Bye bye. Bye bye Roland. Unless oh, bye bye who? Bye bye. Bye bye Roland. Bye bye somebody. Fraser's got a lot more reasons to ship him in here than th to, to raise here than to call, doesn't he? No. Oh, he called. So, yeah. Roland, look, uh, if a deuce comes off, Roland, like a blank deuce, Roland's in a lot of trouble here. A lot of scare cards for Fraser in the turn as well. Check. Check. Wow, Roland, that was a very good check there. Oh, oh, and he hit his four. Oh, sick. 
But Fraser's not going to lose too much because of the ace, right? Well, Fraser's going to call whatever Roland bets here now. Let's see if Roland can take his time and put in a nice size 23. bet. So it's 23,000. Now here's the thing. The Roland is not a big kind of, you know, bluffing guy. I mean, he... But if Frazier might be thinking back to a few years ago, but but in that case, Roland bluffed him on every street, not just one or two streets. I mean, I think Roland's only made about three or four sort of large size bets in this entire match, Phil. Over mm -hmm. three of them. You know, we s saw the one where Frazier paid him on the river, the one where he folded on the turn and Roland was bluffing. There haven't been that many of them. Who well. If Frazier can get away from this, I would say it's a very, very nice laydown. Absolutely very nice laydown. I wouldn't say great laydown, but I'd say very nice laydown. And he has a chance to, you know, he has a chance to kind of get away. He senses something's wrong. He's like, I know Roland has it, but, you know, does he have Jack-10? Maybe if, if Frazier's thinking, you know, I don't know. Um, well, let me ask you this, Phil. Would Roland... Wow, what a pass! Would he have checked an ace on the turn? You know, that's a good question. I don't think he would have, um, but he might have. Now, it turns out, I, I will say that Fraser made, he really made a really, really good lay down there. I mean, you, you might even say great lay down. I mean, especially under the conditions. They're in the rubber match right now. His lay down there kept him even with Roland and Chips. And Roland was lucky that hand. Never mind. I mean, he was lucky. Seven. Raised to 7,000. Yeah. Yeah, Roland, you I have mean, to he, say he great lay down when you talk about conditions. I mean, yeah. pressure. 21. Big Ray, money. 21,000. He's, he's just pulling some different tools out of his box. Roland has played a, is playing I a completely a different his hand all day. Well, it's not that unusual. <laughs> he's obviously saying that I to try change. and... Uh, mm, I'm dude. thinking. He's, he's saying that to sow exactly deception, right? Make queen him ten? think it's 10 jack, jack, queen, yeah, queen, really queen 10. Queen 10. Well, here's the weird thing is that, uh, here's the weird thing is that if Frazier, this is the kind of situation where Frazier's got Roland talking, he might figure out Roland's, Full he might on. just ship it or something. I mean, if he can somehow ship it, Roland's, I can't really call with fives. I think he's, he's, he's trying to, he said, I haven't hit a flop with this hand all day. And I think... It sounds like he's trying to make Roland think he's got certain kind of connecting face cards or something so that maybe he can take the pot away if it comes like that. You know what I mean? Try to give himself... Frazier, <coughs> he might... If he moves in here, it's a great raise. I mean, it's a great move in. I mean, really... Think he could move in? Well, I, the call... The, even well. the call was fine. I mean... Uh, I think if it comes like... Roland said Queen 10. I, I, I think Frazier's planning on bluffing some pots here. Could come deuce three six or something too, and then take it. Wow. Check. Yep. Check. Frazier's actually hit this. Yep, he hit it. Check it. He checked right Check. behind him. Yep. Check. Looks like check check. check. Frazier has to bet here. Yeah. Ten thousand's fine. Twenty thousand's better. He has to bet. Roland would have bet. I, I, Roland would have bet all those hands. One pair. You, how good? How big? Eight. Eight. <laughs> it was an ambitious call. Roland's but frustrated. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, Roland was just even money in there, and right. uh, a, and maybe if you consider that Ian was going to try to take a bluff at that, Roland was an underdog. Yeah. If you consider that Ian was going to bluff. Roland was actually an underdog that hand. Yeah. It definitely put him off following through on the flop, sort of thinking that that was in Ian's ballpark. I mean, six more. The Wolf's got an ace here. The Wolf's got an ace here. And wow, he 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 made it a pretty large bet here, Fraser. Six thousand more. Roland just called. Check it. This is Check. dicey. Check. I like Ian Frazier's move here. Um, Out of the big blind? Because he's been playing pretty tight. So now he has to follow through with the bet. 12, maybe. Well played, Ian. Yeah. 
That was a good play. That was a good play um, because he hasn't tried one of those big blind raises in a long time. And Roland's been limping on the button a lot or raising on the button a lot. And so Ian just said, all right, look, it's time to try one again. And he followed through nicely. And the wolf was a little too timid to sort of reship there with the ace on the button. Yeah. Call. Check. I believe that if Roland were spending more time trying to read Ian, he may have won a match already. Yeah. They both flopped a straight draw here. Jack is disastrous for Fraser. That's not, that's a big card seven for Ian. That's seven and it, he, he could get blown off this. No. Ian? No. no, no, I mean, DeWolf could get blown off. Fraser yeah, yeah, he sh could. Shouldn't Fraser ship it? Is it too easy? He's only got 60,000 back, DeWolf. Or it, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's a... Uh, Better to call two barrels, maybe? Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see him just call here. And make DeWolf make a big call. bet on the river. I don't know if DeWolf will make the bet, but, but DeWolf needs a six or a jack. Um, he doesn't get a lot if a jack comes, but... <laughs> wow, and Roland hit <laughs> Very lucky. That's pretty lucky. Very lucky. That's pretty lucky. <laughs> He's trying to figure out, right, what's the bet size where if I get raised, I have to pass? Yeah, he, he might bet 15, 20,000 here. Roland tends to bet a lot when he hits. So he, he in his case, he might bet 22,000 or something, but there's that queen. I mean, Fraser, could he, couldn't Fraser have a queen here? Is it not so likely, maybe? That's why I'd like to see him bet 15 or 18,000. Cool. I got a strike. And a call. You got a strike? Yeah. Wow, that what a, a river card, Phil. I mean, Wow. I mean, look at the so difference here. DeWolf Roland. goes back to the start, 100,000. If that doesn't come, Fraser oh is God. never losing that pot, is he? He's never losing that pot. He's always going to call. He called 25,000 snap on the river. Ten. Raise to 10,000. 27. We raised 27,000. We raised all in. Oh! Fraser's gone! And he called him! He's Fraser's got him gone. dead! Bye-bye, Roland! <coughs> wow! And Roland is in bad shape. Man, he's hit a lot yeah. of cards, Roland has this. Roland's been complaining about how unlucky he's been, but my goodness. One time ace. <laughs> I have a feeling Roland's going to hit it, just no. like Daniel. They just no. keep hitting their cards and no, hitting their no, cards. No, the Razor got cards. him. The Razor got him. The Razor deserves to win, but we all know that. I mean, look at the math. Uh, you wow. right, Josh. Roland did so many things right, God, but at the end of the ace day. Ace four. Why <laughs> shove with ace four there? Fraser's feel good. It's Ian Fraser at the final table. The wolf. The well, wolf got a spade, beat. a spade like a five of spades really messes it up here. There's the queen oh of my. spades. Roland's going to win with a seven or a spade. <laughs> or an ace. Or an ace. I have a feeling he's going to get there, Jess. Ah, he, d he doesn't deserve it. Eight of spades. But I feel like he's going to get there. Oh. So sick. So sick. So sick. That is sick. God. That is sick. Just so That's sick. That's not fair. That's I love Roland DeWolf, but that is not nah, fair he, for Fraser. He, 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 Ian, he had it. Ian Fraser had it. How much desire did he come here with? Out of the last Premier League, he had to fight his way in. I just got lucky for the first time in the Premier League. Did you he hear Roland? He said he just way. got lucky for the first time in the Premier oh. League. Yeah, and that's the way he uh, sees it. I, I really honestly believe that Roland that Roland uh, doesn't see the hands he gets lucky. Fraser's he had, only Fraser has shown so much Roland. character Roland. in this Premier Roland. League. Yeah, I really and have Fraser to say. was so unlucky with the Kings versus the Eights. It was a raise all in call type of thing here. Fraser with an ace. Good. Roland DeWolf with Jack 10. And wow, there's 52,000 in this pot. Look at that. I mean, it's only 45% to Wolf. I mean, he has a 45% chance to win his way into the Premier League. Fraser's just thinking, just turn an ace, deuce, three, and end this thing, man. Everybody on this flop. Wow. <laughs> Maximum sweat. Turn us a four of hearts just so that Rowan needs a eight, Oof. a ten, a jack. He's gone favorite. Or a king. Not now. 
Okay, Roland needs an eight, a 10, a jack, or a king. Otherwise, Frazier's gonna have some chips and this match is, wow. Oh, the Razor's on the comeback. This is starting to get pretty sick now. They played two levels. There's only a double up in it. And with the blinds going up, there's no telling who's gonna come out in front. It's only gonna be an all in. It's only gonna be an all in and it might be a I call. Could. Yeah, what? I only looked at one. Probably Jack, well, might've been an ace. Could've been a king. Ace four it is. Another ace four. These guys, every hand is, they play ace a big four, pot me, with Jack ace six four. him. Well, Roland won the huge pot with ace well, four. I'm happy. I did. He had an ace on the river. Good luck, mate. Level if you get it. Space yeah, good. might get it. Oh my God, what a flop for flop. Roland. He flopped a pair and the nut flush no, draw. 82% now wow. for DeWolf. Just a spade and an ace or four, it's just over. Wolf. It's over. Good luck. Good luck. I hope you win. Played great. He really did play really well. He made the nuts. Wolf. He Wolf. made the Wolf. nut flush. Wow. And Roland there said to Ian, I think you played really well. He made it. He may have gotten light outplayed there tonight, Phil. After qualifying through the Team Pro heats, I think Ian Fraser had the longest road to get to this point, and unfortunately this is where it ends, coming second in this. You played a really good game, very aggressive right from the get-go. Talk to me about how you feel about your game. Um, yeah, I mean, I just played my, my game, you know, I only really know how to play heads up one way, but I don't know, obviously I haven't seen the cards, but I felt like I completely outplayed him, you know, and it was down to um, two crucial hands. Uh, that done it for me really but I really you know I kept thinking to myself why well, I, I snap call him all in but only because I know that he's not strong but then I'm thinking to myself I, I keep winning so many pots off him I should really kept it as it was you know because I was just so confident and I knew he didn't really he didn't show a lot of bottle in the heads up you know um, but anyway he beat me uh, I was one card away and, and that's it Obviously really happy to win three years in a row in the heads up in the Premier League and create Premier League history by being the first ever to make three consecutive finals or th and three finals in total. The final table lineup is set. Each point will translate to 10,000 in chips on that final table and Phil Locke will be the chip leader. Negrano with DeWolf, of course, happy to be there and have a good shot. Daniel Negreanu and Roland DeWolf have won their heads up bouts and the final lineup is now complete. Next time they join David Benjamin, Luke Schwartz, Phil Locke and online qualifier Giovanni Safina at the final table of the Premier League Poker 4. The little boy did good this time. I think he just earned himself an extra 50,000 off of me. That's pretty cute. This is brutal because the more you talk, the more I want to fold. This guy's like ready to blow. Oh, I'm talking about Giovanni. You're a curious guy. Oh, when I saw you grab him, I went like this in my mind. Mm. I'll go home and I'll smile. I tell you, I honestly will. Such a donk you are.